We are on kick, K I C K dot com. We are live. By the time you see this, we probably won't be, so just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK and to Germany. Because, you know, Germany is my second biggest, you know, you dig lately. So, you know, we got to, uh, we got to, you know, see what's, we got to check it out, man. If you missed the live, this is where you can catch up at. Uh, we do got the Patreon, and we also got Discord. Don't forget, we got merch as well. All of the links to this will be down below. Ooh, and I forgot to turn off the chat. I should restart it. But I'm going to just let it rock out. You know what I'm saying? That was my bad. Oops. Why Germans don't get fat like Americans? It's crazy. Come on here. I'm trying to have a peaceful entertaining Monday morning and first thing second thing first thing I see was something probably the worst thing I ever reacted to and this is the second thing Germans talking about how fat Americans are and they're not wrong so let me just I've lived in Germany on and off since 2016 and living here has given me a very valuable outside perspective of my home country the USA and a huge takeaway for me has been that Germany is sort of the land of moderation and the middle, while the United States is the land of extremes. Extremely rich, extremely poor, extremely beautiful, extremely ugly. <laughs> I put Ohio. Ah, that's funny. I be on Ohio ass. Ohio is terrible looking. I ain't gonna lie. Ohio, they got some real steppers out there. Salute to everything y'all got going on, but it's ugly. Simple. Extremely fit and extremely fat. Damn. Behind only the small island nations, the United States is the most obese country in the world. The ranging numbers estimate that 30% of American adults are overweight, while 42% are considered obese, leaving over two thirds of America's adult population. Woo! Population being considered overweight or obese among the highest is adult population being considered overweight or obese. Why they put bro, man? Why they doing him like that? Beast among the highest in the world. But contrast this to Germany, a Western nation with a lot of societal similarities to the United States. And you'd think a country that's obsessed with bread and beer would also have this problem on the same scale. But Germany actually has a much lower prevalence of obesity with the rate being around 19%. Even when just walking around in these two countries, you can notice this difference. So for the past few weeks, I've taken a deep dive into why this is. And it's been fascinating at times. No cap, I feel like Miami is a separate part of the world. I mean, a separate part of America. Like I do not, if you're fat and you live in Miami, no offense. This is just my opinion. If you're fat and you live in Miami, you need to go see like, like somebody maybe you got an overactive thyroid gland or something because i don't think it's possible to be big and live here how it's hot the moment you walk you lose three pounds you walk two steps three pounds sweat it off instantly i don't i don't, I don't know and shocking at times that is why so settle in and let's talk about why americans get fat and germans do not. Americans are not winning their battle against obesity. I can juggle these. That was actually pretty good. You see that? Okay, chill out. Now, right. while we're on the subject, let me tell you guys a little bit about my health. So many of you guys know I've been an athlete almost my entire life, so my health and wellness are super important to me. I really like to take care of myself and my body. I always okay. find that I feel my best both mentally and physically when I really take care of what I put into my body. Facts. That is where the sponsor of today's video comes in. I understand that you got to pay these bills, but they ain't got nothing to do with me, my boy. Salute, though. Salute, though. Oh, you gave him a whole little, a whole little portion of the video, like physically each video. So there's a few main categories that I think we need hey. to discuss. The first is lifestyle. 
The Germans love to walk. Of course, there's walking and there's walking. The Sonntag Spaziergang, or Sunday Stroll, has long been an established feature in the lives of many German families. Well, Germans are pretty famous for loving the outdoors. Now, this is not to say that America- That's true. I had a, I used to date an au pair here. First of all, I miss her. And if you ever wanted to come back, I'm here for you. Um, <laughs> she was like, she was like in shape before she moved here. And then like she got out of shape, but not out of shape because she was tall. She's like six feet tall. So out of shape to her country standard she, to her and to herself. And then when she went back, she got back in shape. Like she got small again, like instantly. I was like, damn. But yeah. Americans don't also she like to walk a lot love outdoor activities. I would actually even argue that certain American states like Colorado and the parts of my state, Oregon, are just as active, on, if not more active than Germany. But we're talking about the countries on average as a whole. Germans are much more active in the outdoors than Americans. And from my perspective, Germans seem to participate in physical activities that are sort of mild in nature, and they don't really seem to separate their life from their exercise. I feel like it's all one, which probably makes it way easier and doesn't feel like a daunting task. People in the United States either are obsessed with fitness and working out almost in an unhealthy way or don't work out or exercise at all. So for example, with activities like walking or a mild hike or a, a little bike ride. I ain't even never heard of a mild hike. What the hell is a mild hike? What is that? I'm too much in the city to be mild hike. First of all, I couldn't even walk down the block in Chicago. Let's be real. <laughs> Ever since I moved to Miami, every chance I get to walk, I walk. But like, cause I, I didn't have that. That was a luxury I didn't have in Chicago. But now that I'm in Miami, you know, I take it, you know, get my little steps in, you know what I'm saying? I'm relaxed, no pipe on me. I'm just walking freely out here. Salute. This seems to be very common with Germans. And the stats back it up. 80% of German households own a bike, while only 48% of American households do. Now, we'll touch a little bit more on this stuff later, but I think it's important just to recognize sort of the different attitudes of these activities between the two different countries. So since living in Germany, every time I go back to the States, I feel a little bit sick for about a week. And I always kind of joked that it's like, oh, my body, uh, got used to not consuming all of those American chemicals while in Germany now I'm back and my body is dealing with those chemicals again and it was always like kind of a joke um, but after researching every no no it's not on standby it's still ready but it ain't you know it ain't right you know what I'm saying my daughter getting bigger it can't just be you know what I'm saying anywhere thing it seems like there's probably quite a bit of truth to that diet food chemicals. It's the early 20th century. Times are hard in the U.S. We're facing the Dust Bowl and eventually the Great Depression. So during this time, farmers face severe economic hardship. And so the government implemented interventions to stabilize agricultural markets and support struggling farmers, including the subsidization of corn. Now this was actually supposed mm. to just be a temporary measure, but over time we realized all of the industrial applications of corn. Aside from it just being a very below average food that I never get on my Chipotle, it has a wide range of applications, such as biofuel production, animal feed, and food processing. Eventually, lobbying groups came into play as well, which leads this to still be happening today. So the situation in the US today is that corn is subsidized by the government and it is cheap and abundant. And this has led to the development and widespread use of high fructose corn syrup. Ah, yep, 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 yep. That's how I, I taste like uh, UK drinks and all the UK food that I've been trying, and it's like a clear difference. Like, it's not even, it's unmeasured. Like, the UK stuff tastes way healthier than the American stuff. Like, literally. Like, I had a fruit boost. I know what a fruit boost is, of course. I had a fruit boost from the UK, and I thought it was like a diet drink. I was, what's this? 
I ain't taste no hot fructose, high corn syrup or nothing. I was like, okay, I'm not used to this, but I imagine this is why y'all skinnier. This is an artificial sweetener made of corn that's cheaper than sugar and satisfies that American sweet tooth palate. So if you saw the video where my cousin Ty tried that sort of, I forgot what it was called, but this pastry from the German bakery, which is one of the most sugar-filled pastries you can get at a German bakery, and he described it as like a diet donut. And Ty zooms in. Actually picked out something that I've never eaten before, a quark tache. Okay. It tastes like a diet donut. All right. <laughs> Ty says it tastes like a diet donut. That just kind of shows the difference right there. Our American- Honestly, it's the same for the UK for me, I feel. I feel like every time I eat something, I'm eating it, it's diet. <laughs> Palates are hooked on sweets, which is satisfied by this incredibly unhealthy high fructose corn syrup, which helps plump us up. So today, the most subsidized crop in the USA is still corn, which is- High fructose corn syrup. Orange juice, water, strawberry puree, sugar, lemon juice. Okay. All right, bet. No high fructose corn syrup. No high fructose corn syrup. It's not the case in Germany. Germany primarily subsidizes wheat. Hey, it's Will from Booker Law. You have a big. It's an L setup, Will. I don't know what you. What you. <clears throat> barley and dairy. And this is possibly why whenever Germans come over to the United States, they always complain about the quality of American dairy products. Facts. That was one of the UK things too. my girlfriend Facts. was excited when she came back to Germany to get good dairy again. So we're drowning in the high fructose corn syrup in the USA and it's in an alarming amount of food. And this is corn syrup in the USA. It's in a Big Mac? It's an ibuprofen or Moltrin? And it's in an alarming amount of food. Wow. And this is helping to make us fat. It's also crazy when you look at a food product, the exact same product, the American version versus a European version, and how much more sugar conversion versus. Yo. This, no, this literally be how it be. A for the UK as well. Literally. It'd be like four ingredients and something. I'd be like, how is that even possible? European version. And look at this vegetable oil, sunflower, ripped seeds. Vegetable oil, canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, hydrogen oil, soybean oil. Why? How much more sugar is in the American version and how many more chemicals are in Damn! Yo, my daughter eats macaroni and cheese almost every day and she loves it. Oh man, I gotta get me something else. I gotta do something different. I don't even like how that looks. Of food. Well, American food is governed by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, while the EU is governed by the European Food Safety Authority. But check this out. The FDA allows additives to be used in American foods until they are proven harmful. Europe, on the other hand, will only allow certain additives in food after they have been proven to be unharmful. The wow. So they don't care about our health. FDA is a reactive government, while the European agencies are precautionary. Precaution. That is wild. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that all of these chemicals and additives are making us fat and obese, like high fructose corn syrup, but they're- It is. I'm gonna take the easy route out and say it is. <laughs> probably not healthy and probably not helping us. Another obvious major point with food is fast food culture and portion sizes. The United States is a culture that values convenience, and there's nothing more convenient than fast food. All the major- So White Castle is really only a, 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 a Illinois thing, huh? I didn't know that. Major fast food companies come from the United States, and it's ingrained in our culture. Additionally, portion sizes in the USA are comically big. I didn't even realize this until I lived in Germany and then came back to the States, only to see how crazy they really were. You know, another thing is I live in an old European town that was built for the foot, not for the car, and I very conveniently walked down to the grocery store to pick up these groceries, something I do almost every other day. So it's just sort of built into the lifestyle here. 
walk down to the grocery store. That probably gives me 2,000, 3,000 steps every time I do it, and I do this multiple times a week. Something I don't do in the United States. In the United States, when I go to the grocery store, I'm driving there and I'm buying less healthy foods with a lot more yummy, but bad for you, chemicals. And this subject of walking brings us to our next topic. Cities and infrastructure. Now, we all know that the United States is a huge country and incredibly spaced out, and more often than not, you do need a car to right, live in the United right. States. It's just too big and things are too far apart. American cities were largely made for the car, while European and German cities were made more for the pedestrian and the foot. So this is the typical excuse. I like that. You probably find love more often as well in Germany than America. Since you gotta drive everywhere and everybody's in their own world when they're driving. But when you walk and you can run into people, oh, excuse me, <laughs> how are you today? Beautiful day outside, isn't it? <laughs> What's your number? Let's have kids. Will you marry me? You get me? It goes a little something like that. In America, it's like, eh, watch out. I got stuff to do. The age you can drive in the U.S. is like, with, with a permit, I think 15, 14, 15. 16, 17, then at 18, I think you can get a license, or 17, you can get a license. Used for why Americans drive more than Europeans and walk and bike way less. It's because our country was built for the car and we can't do anything to help it. That's just how our country's set up and how it is. But what if we eliminated some of these variables and found a little bit of consistency, for an example? I came across this really interesting set of data that took a look at Stuttgart, and Washington, D.C. These cities have similar economies, labor markets, and core populations of around 600,000 people. Funny enough, these are also two cities that I have spent quite a bit of time in. I went to college for four years in Washington, D.C., and I do a lot of work now in Stuttgart with the Stuttgart Surge football team. So I know both of these cities pretty well. D.C. is also known as one of the very few American cities with good public transportation. D.C. You know what they call D.C.? Chocolate City. Beautiful black women out there. Shout out D.C., man. I've been there one time. Had a good time. I can attest to this. I actually used this in college. And it's also one of the most walkable cities in the United States. So let's take a look at some of this data and That's how true. people transport themselves throughout these respective cities. 76% of people in Washington, D.C. own a car, while only 58% of people in Stuttgart do. The percentage of all trips made by car, 83% of Americans in D.C., just 58% of Germans living in Stuttgart. This is also <laughs> interesting. The percentage of trips made by walking, 11% for people in D.C. Me and my daughter walk everywhere. 4% for people in Stuttgart. And for cycling, 1% of trips made by Americans in D.C. were made by wow. bicycle. Whereas 10% of all trips were made by bicycle for Germans living in Stuttgart. 10 times as much. So even when walking and biking is an option, like in Washington, D.C., we Americans choose not to. I think it's ingrained in us a little bit. I would argue that sort of low in- This is why my mom wants me to get a car so bad. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I don't really need a car. You know, so for what? I'll be trying to tell her, like, I don't need a car. Like, all, the only time I need a car is to take my daughter from my house to your house. And that doesn't seem like it's worth it for me when you have a car and you can do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool walking. <laughs> Intensity, mild exercise like biking and especially walking are the best ways to lose weight and lose body fat. You can do a lot of it casually and it's not like jogging or running that's a bit more intense and will possibly work up a big appetite for you. So you come home and you splurge on a bunch of food after working out. This is why walking is probably the best for losing body fat we just don't do it. Americans refuse. We hate. I noticed that though. Walking is walking is walking is pretty cool for me. I feel like doing it walking in in, in Florida. I've been losing a lot of little, you know, little pockets of fat and things of that nature. You get me? 
walking. And a lot of it can be blamed on our cities and how our country is structured. But looking at this example of DC and Stuttgart and seeing the differences in these statistics really opened my eyes to show that it's not just that, we also have different attitudes when it comes to this stuff. A people in Germany do not seem to get as fat and obese as people in the United States. It's a fascinating subject. I'd be interested to hear if you guys have any opinions on this. If you have, that's very interesting. I ain't even gonna lie. It's like half of it we kind of knew though, but at the same time, it's still pretty interesting to hear it out loud. Like, like damn, we fat as hell in America. That's crazy. <laughs> TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. I'm gone.